Scotland had beaten Zaire and drawn with Brazil and Yugoslavia. Subsequently, he was to steer his team towards the next World Cup finals. The equaliser, Kenny Douglas. The consistency of his success as team manager made it all the more unexpected when he fell victim to the extravagance of Scotland's footballing ambitions. And not my mind, I think he was assassinated. I think Willie Orman's career was ruined by the fact that a senior official in Romania suggested that we should perhaps look to someone else. Now, to me, that killed Willie Ormond off effectively. Willie Ormond was in tears in Romania. And after that, I think Willie Ormond was a shadow of the man. And Willie Ormond, to me, in travelling in World Cups, came as close as anyone in 1974 to really earning us glory, without a doubt. But Willie Ormond was so shabbily treated, I think that it was shameful. All he'd done was to get us out of one World Cup undefeated and into another one. And they thought that wasn't good enough up at the SFA. And they voted, and they voted for three or seven of them. You know, the usual butchers, bakers and candlestick makers that think they can run football knew more about it than Willie. And they treated him scandalously. And because he was a great man of honour, he just felt that he couldn't work with people who, to his face, were saying, good on you, Willie, and behind his back were just sharpening the daggers. And his going was sad. And what happened afterwards, the whole McLeod shambles in Argentina, just rather underlined the point. We'd have been better off if we kept him. Few Scottish fans at the time would have agreed their support for Ali McLeod's team could be regarded as rather uncritical. Masson to take it, and he's done it! He has done it, and the Scottish supporters are going mad! Willie Johnston. The euphoria had already begun during the crucial qualifying game against Wales. Martin Buchan. Good running by Buchan, read it well. There's Kenny Douglas in there. Oh, what a goal! Oh, yes! The euphoria was to last all the way to Argentina. I think that 18 months was possibly the finest 18 months that Scottish fans have ever had. Right, we maybe didn't win the World Cup, but they had a wonderful 18 months. It was a bit uh, disastrous when we had a man in charge before Argentina who was feeding our national genius for self-delusion. I mean, uh, and a lot of people up there who, who now uh, tend to take a hard line about what Ali did were charging to march under uh, his fairly tattered banner before we went to Argentina. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't believe it at the time. He got a nation going in a way that's never been done before or since and never will be done again. He brought us to the edge of insanity. I remember writing, after that interview, this huge, we will win, says McLeod piece. And on the bottom, I tacked on a few lines of my own saying, great, well, I mean, optimism never hurt anybody, but realism would suggest that we're not going to do quite as well as Ali McLeod says. I had the biggest bundle of hate mail ever People were writing in, you're a traitor. One reader wrote in on a toilet roll and said, I hope you die of cancer. Perhaps it was that peculiarly Scottish combination of arrogance and self-doubt that made us hold a kind of celebration before the competition. Thousands of fans paid admission to go to Hamden to see the team leave. I get the credit of that, and it was nothing to do with me, really. You know, it was Ernie Walker one day said to me, it would be a marvellous thing, he said, if we'd have sent off at Hamden. It wasn't a, a, a lap of honour, anyway. It, uh, it was arranged in conjunction with the police because we recognised that there were going to be tremendous problems and scenes from wherever the team left. I said, I we're celebrating with the World Cup before we've won it. Really, that's what you're doing. It wasn't a celebration of winning the World Cup before we got to the place. It was people were saying, I think, that they were happy that we were in the World Cup. And, you know, it was a wonderful evening and it was a wonderful gathering of family people and, and the patriotic night, etc. It wasn't meant to be boastful. I didn't fancy it. Oh, I mean, I mean, I had more at Hamden for a not a game than some teams have for games, you know. Oh, it was terrible. I fell off. Oh, didn't really look far. I mean, I can look back and laugh now. I didn't like it at the time. Oh, I didn't like it at the time. 
I think Annie, and I'm sorry to say this also, was too busy selling carpets and didn't realise the enormity of what we're going into. He was put against, such as Ernst Happel and Minotti. It really was a boy against wolves, not men, wolves, because they are the mafia of football, and they won. The money made from advertising gave rise to rumours of El Dorado proportions. Ali McLeod, some said, was becoming a millionaire. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. I've heard all these rumours. But see all these people that say that. They're the millionaires. They're the ones that made the money. You know, it's, oh, it's a lot. I mean, that's, that's a good story. Oh, good. Someone once phoned me up and said, I hear you get this from this and here from that. And I said, oh, I just ask the income tax. They know what I got. And they, I mean, lot, all these stories were investigated. I would have bought it. Whatever the finances, it looked briefly as if the massive emotional investment of the Scottish fans was going to pay off. For part of an afternoon, they were glad they had come to Argentina. But the market and Scottish self-confidence had a sudden collapse. In the 3-1 defeat by Peru, the result was not to be the only embarrassment. I took these two poles, reactive on. Uh, I took them and I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about a dope test, anything. After the game, we played terrible. We got beat. Myself and Kenny Dalglish and for a dope test. And I always remember into the jar, into the bottle, and uh, mine was a terrible colour. You know, I was just honest, I'm going, it's the colour of lager, you know, I'm going, it's not even too clever, that. I didn't even think about it. So I went back in the bus, back to the camp. Next morning, Ali sent for me. He says, uh, your dope test is positive. He says, what did you take? I said, I took two tablets. Oh, I, that was a start of it, you know. Deep down inside me, I don't th think honestly that Willie Johnson honestly believed he took drugs. But he took them, right? But I don't honestly think that he believed it. But uh, well, I had some laughs, you know, when we, when we got a hold of the, the tablets, you know. I always remember the Celtic doctor saying, well, we better just throw them away, you know. And we're passing this field, I'll never forget it as long as I live. And there was a crowd of Argentinian cows if you know over there, they're very thin. And they were kind of walking around like that. And we threw the pills into the field. See when we come back from the training that day, the cows were all jumping all over the place. They, they think I've made that story up, but that's a true story. Maybe they should have put Scottish jerseys on them. Willie Johnston's dismissal from the World Cup seemed like a nomen for Scotland. He travelled home to Britain to be met by his club manager, Ron Atkinson. A big run done, done great for me. He did, they helped me at a right bad time. Uh, as I say, I didn't know what was happening. Couldn't have flown, couldn't have hold of the wife and that. And uh, I came back off at Heathrow and Big Ron was waiting for me. So he puts his arm around me and he says, hey, Wee man, uh, he says, I've just signed you a great contract with Boots the Chemist. Not everybody saw the joke. Ali McLeod's team played next against Iran who obliged by scoring for Scotland. But then Iran turned nasty and started kicking the ball towards the Scottish goal. Iran knew about football the way day trippers to Calais have explored France. They shouldn't have been much better than even money to win a football competition at a Butlins holiday camp. They drew with Scotland. The Scottish euphoria was degenerating into hysteria. Ali McLeod began to look as if he had just stepped out of Shangri-La. There seemed nowhere to go but away. Fans who had travelled 7,000 miles with his promises for fuel didn't wish him a fond farewell. Scotland's venture to Argentina had begun to look like a psychological version of the Darien scheme. Reality had made the dream ironic. The funny thing about that record was, sold all these copies, and the day after I ran through with us one each, uh, a guy in Dundee was selling it for a penny and giving you a hammer to break it with. You know? And I put all the money that I made out of that single into an LP, you know, financed it myself, and it was released the day after we, uh, we get beat. <laughs> or we drew where I ran, you know. So uh, there's about 30,000 lying up and collapsing in a garage somewhere. Well, where they got to. Uh... The old story with 
Mexico, wasn't 